Hello everyone and welcome to volume 2 of the amazing tricks in Excel. In volume 1, we learned 10 smart Excel tricks that can help you save a lot of time and complete tasks which otherwise seem difficult. Let's continue our journey here and learn 10 more interesting and very useful Excel tricks that will make you even smarter in Excel. Our first trick is about using autofill in Excel. Now you might be wondering, I'm already aware of autofill, what is new in this? Here, we're going to learn autofill with a twist. We're going to take it one level above and you're going to learn how to use a controlled autofill. Let's type a number here and the text here which says employee 1. Now, if you select this cell which contains the number and drag it from the bottom right corner, you get one repeated in all the cells down below. But in case if you do the same thing to a text, then the number increases and you get employee 1, employee 2 and so on. So in case of numbers, you get the same number when you use autofill. But in case of text, the number increases. Now, if you want, you can reverse this process by using the control button. So let's delete that. And now select this cell and press control from your left hand and then drag this cell and you get numbers which increase in every cell. Now let's repeat the same for text. Press control from the left hand and when you drag, you get the text which repeats in every cell. So if you do not use control, then the numbers will not increase, but the text will increase. If you use control, then the numbers will increase, but the text will remain the same. Sometimes when we download data from a database, some of the numbers get converted to text due to some download errors. In this sheet, it appears that column G to column J contain numbers, but it is possible that some of these numbers are incorrectly stored as text. Now, if you use this data in arithmetic functions like sum, average, then you will get wrong result because such formulas cannot be applied on text. The same is true for dates also. A date which is stored as text cannot be used in similar formulas. So we need to identify all such columns where we have this problem and convert them back to their correct format. So what we are going to do is we are going to select the entire sheet from the top left corner here and then press Ctrl and 1 together which will open a format cells dialog box. Now you need to go to the last option which is custom and here below type you will specify how you want your data to appear. The data we are referring here can be of four types here positive numbers, negative numbers, zeros and text. So you specify all four formats here separated by a column. So what we'll do is for the first option we'll say all the numbers should appear in black font. The numbers include numbers as well as dates. Dates are technically numbers which appear as date when you choose the date format. So let's keep it as black. Let's leave the negatives and zeros blank and for the text let's take it red which means all text in this worksheet should get converted to red font. Now when you click on OK see what happens. So now you see the sales column is in red color which means all these numbers are actually text and we need to correct that. Similarly the column A which appeared to be dates is actually text. The column B here while applying the custom number formatting got converted to numbers from dates and we can get it back to dates by changing the format from here. So this is not an issue. Now let's correct column G and to convert any number which is stored as text just multiply that by 1. So let's drag it down, copy it and paste it over column G and as soon as you paste it you observe the color changes to black. So now these numbers have been converted from text to numbers. Repeat the process for the order date column. And now we have got rid of the problem and you can clear formatting from the entire sheet so that all the numbers and text appear in the same color. Now let's get to the next trick where we will see how to sum values from multiple sheets in the fastest possible way. 
So here if you see, I have the sales details for five products for three years in separate sheets, FY19, FY20 and FY21. And in the total sheet, I'm going to sum the values from all three sheets. And to do that, you do not need to visit all the sheets. You can visit one sheet and get the work done. Select all these cells and now type equal to and sum in the first cell. Press tab to enter the formula. And now let's visit FY19 and select cell B2. Now press shift from your left hand and click on FY20 and FY21. When you do that, you see all three worksheets cell B2 has been added to the sum formula. Now you close the formula and now you need to press control and enter together. When you press control and enter, you see in the total sheet, you get the values for all five products got summed up. Let's verify one value. Let's verify for product C. This is 768 here. FY19 figure is 325. Let's add 325 to 149 and 294. So this comes equal to 768. So the answer is correct. Now my boss asked me to prepare the ratio analysis for our company. I prepared the analysis, but there are some errors somewhere because of lack of data. And my boss is just calling me right now. I cannot correct the errors, but I want to hide them quickly. The fastest way to hide all the errors from your worksheet is by taking the help of conditional formatting. So click all the cells, go to home tab and choose conditional formatting. Go to this option, which is new rule. And now you have to select the second option, which says format only cells that contain. And in the drop down here, you have to choose errors. Now I'm going to specify a format for all the cells that contain errors. And that format will be that convert the font color in all these cells to white and fill also to white. So click on OK and now you see the errors have vanished. Hiding errors will make your sheet look slightly more professional. A very important but rarely used alignment option in Excel which is called center across selection. But before using that, let me tell you a problem which can be solved with this alignment option. So I have the sales data of six products for four months and if you see the sales data for product T is not available. Either it was not sold or data is missing for some reason. So what I did was I combined these four cells by clicking on merge and center and I typed NA not applicable or not available for product T. But when I did that, I created a lot of problems for anyone who is going to use this data. For example, if I want to sort January column, I cannot do that. I get an error which says to do this, all the merged cells need to be of the same size. Now I want my data to appear like this and I don't want any error. To do that, I'm going to take the help of center across selection. So let's unmerge these cells. Keep selecting all the four cells. Press control in one and let's go to alignment options. Here in the horizontal option here, click on the second last option which is center across selection. Now this will bring the text in the center of all the chosen cells but without merging any cell. Click on OK and now you see it appears that all these four cells have been merged but in reality they are not merged. If you want to sort your data now, you can easily do that without any problem. If you want to prepare a list of all the files in any folder in your PC, then you can take the help of Excel. You need to go to data tab and click on get data, then choose from file from folder. Now navigate to the folder that you're looking for. And then when you reach the folder, you might not see any files here as of now, but just click on the open button at the bottom, wait for a couple of seconds and Excel has created the list of all the files in that folder. Now click on load and you get the list with all the details relevant to those files like the name, file type, the date when you created that file and the path for that file, everything in one sheet in your Excel file. Now it's the time for our next trick and we're going to see how to apply advanced filter in Excel. 
since this is not an ordinary video so we're going to take advanced filter a level above so i have my data in column a to h here which gives me the sales for certain categories and subcategories of a company now i want to filter out certain data from this data set and i want to extract the data for office supplies from this data set at the same time i want to extract only those rows which contain a sale value more than 3000 now before using advanced filter you have to put these criteria in a proper format which is given in column k and l here so you have to specify the column name one cell above the criteria so my criteria is the category should be office supplies and sales should be greater than 3000 so this is the way you will put the data here and then you'll go to data tab and choose advanced filters in the sort and filter section here click on advanced filter click on copy to another location and you have to specify these fields here the first one is the data set which is called list range so select column a to h here next we need to specify the criteria by selecting these cells here the third one is where do you want to copy the filtered data so let's choose first row column n and let's click on ok when you do that you'll get the filtered data here so you have the data only for office supplies and sales values which are greater than 3000 so this is how you apply advanced filter but in our case we're going to take it one step above what if you do not want all the columns and you want only certain columns from the data set let's see how to do that i'm deleting all these columns now suppose i want three columns order date category and sales so i'll write it down here first cell order date then category and then sales let's expand it a bit and now let's see another way to apply the advanced filter let's go to the filter section advanced list range remains the same criteria range remains the same but instead of selecting one blank cell you have to select these three cells now now when you click on ok you will get the filter data only for the columns that you are looking for sometimes when we are working in a large workbook and we have a lot of sheets it happens that our data resides in one sheet and the formulas that use that data are in some other sheet and we want to keep an eye on both these worksheets at the same time for example in this workbook i have two sheets one having the data set and the second having a formula which calculates the margin based upon this sheet so i'm trying to focus the total margin of four products now i see that i've applied some formula here and based upon that the forecasted margin is coming 28 percent now you do not need to get into the formulas as this trick is not about calculations and all it's just about creating a view where you will be able to see both these worksheets at the same time go to the view tab and then click on new window go again to the view tab and click on arrange all and choose vertical when you do that you are able to see the workbook and its copy side by side now you can select a different sheet in the original workbook and the copy now if i make any change here i do not have to visit the other sheet as i am able to see it here itself my boss has given me an objective that whatever changes i make the forecasted margin should be greater than or equal to 30 percent so let's make some changes here let me increase the sales percentage of product A to 18% and decrease product C to 27% so that the total sales remain 100%. When I do that, I see the forecasted margin now becomes 29%. Let's make A 21% and let's make C 24%. The forecasted margin still remains 29%, so I need to increase product A a bit further. Let's make it 24% bring it down 21% now the forecast margin is 30% and this forecast seems accurate so this way you can have a look at multiple worksheets together and this will simplify your work to a large extent sometimes when you have a large workbook which contains a lot of sheets navigating through the sheets become a bit difficult for example in this workbook i have around 20 sheets and i'm working on the first sheet which is profit and loss statement i want to navigate to the sheet that contains information about the cash flows so normally what we do is we start clicking on the sheet names here till we reach the sheet that we are looking for 
This is cash flow statement and I've reached the sheet now. But there is a better way and a very quick way to reach any sheet that you want to. Go to the bottom left corner of your sheet where you see two arrow signs here, left and right. And anywhere in this screen area, right click and you have a list of all the sheets in your workbook. So let's click on the profit and loss statement and you reach the first sheet. Now let's go back again, right click, click on the cash flow statement and you reach the cash flow statement. Let's try again for some other sheet. Let me click on financial ratios, click OK and you reach the financial ratios worksheet. So this way you can navigate through your workbook in a very fast and efficient manner. Now we all know about pivot tables and we know how useful they are. But there is something called unpivot in Excel. In this workbook, I have the sales for three product categories for nine months. So in column B, C and D, you have three categories and all these cells contain sales values. What I want is that I should have only a single column containing sales. So these three product names should come to column B and sales should move to column C. We need to first convert this data into a table. So let's do that. Go to data tab and click here from table oblique range. This will open the power query editor and this is where you can transform your data in a lot of ways. One such way is called unpivot data. What you need to do is select these three columns, right click and then choose unpivot columns. Now you go to close and load. Wait for a couple of seconds and now you see the category names have come into column B. And so now you have a single column for sales values. So you had nine months earlier and three categories. So now you have 27 rows, nine months into three categories is 27. So this way you can unpivot your data and bring the values into one column. And this is exactly opposite of what a pivot table does. I hope you have liked this video. I will be coming out with a lot more videos on similar topics in Excel to enhance your knowledge and my knowledge also in the process. So keep watching, subscribe to the channel and stay tuned. Thank you for watching this video. Have a nice day.